Welcome. In this video, I will introduce you to the basics of predictive policing. I will start off by defining the different types of predictive policing. I will show you and explain to you the critical information needed to successfully implement such a program. I will provide several examples and guidelines on how to implement this powerful yet misunderstood program. Predictive policing has two major uh, phases, crime apprehension and crime prevention. Crime apprehension, when you focus on this, arrests are the focal point. It is time consuming and difficult to set up. You need additional resources with expertise and it is only effective when you target serial crimes. Crime apprehension will lead to very little, if any, crime reduction. The other phase, crime prevention, on the other hand, is very easy to set up. You don't need additional resources. Drastic crime reduction can be attained within one or two months. Any part one crime problem can be reduced and at the end of a year you should and you will attain a 40 to 60 percent crime reduction. Crime reduction with predictive policing. You have a problem area anywhere in the US and in this problem area the average crimes are 10 per week. Let's say you have five burglaries three burglary for motor vehicles, and two grand theft autos. Using predictive policing, your goal is to reduce it by at least 40%. You're going to take the average of 10 crimes and reduce it to 6. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to focus on targeting the two major aspects of crime problems. You're going to focus on the outside and the inside approximately 70 percent of all crime in any particular area come from outside the problem area and 30 percent come from inside the problem area so the goal when you use predictive policing is to focus 30 percent on preventing the 70 percent and 10 percent on preventing this 30 percent so at the end you're only basically focusing on reducing four crimes out of the ten. The most important thing that you can have or that you should have when it comes to predictive policing is your forecast information and your route information. These two parts are the most critical parts when it comes to predictive policing. If you're missing one, you will not be able to successfully uh, attain the required results. Forecast information is very, very important because it gives you the best chance to put your resources on the right uh, location at the right time. And I can provide this information with an 80% probability. The forecast information that I provide can be on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, and even on a yearly basis. The routes that I provide have an 85% probability that the suspects are going to be on that route before, during, or, and, or after the commission of a crime. The number of suspects will be known to you and the number of crimes that they will commit will also be known to you. The question is how can one officer or one unit successfully and drastically reduce crime by preventing it? The answer to the question is you focus on high visibility and being at the best possible location at the best time. Here we have the same problem area with the same crimes. Now what I'm going to provide you with is the route. 
and this rod has an 85% probability that the uh, suspects are going to be traveling uh, either before, during, or after the commission of a crime. I will also provide you with the specific crime, the date, the time, and the location, also with an 80% probability. So I'm helping you put your resources in the best possible location at the best time and so what's going to end up happening is by your officer staying focused on the route and the crime forecast locations, they are going to prevent a lot of the crimes. One officer or one A car is going to seem to be everywhere. They're going to be here, 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 here. And at the end, the goal is not to make arrests. The goal is to prevent four crimes. By preventing three outsiders from coming in and committing three crimes or preventing one or two crimes within the uh, problem area. Predictive policing also has the other phase, crime apprehension. Crime apprehension is a little more difficult, but it can also be successfully implemented if you follow a certain guidelines in order for you to successfully implement a crime apprehension program you need to have similar crimes same uh, mo similar suspects and it could be used for any part one crime adw's robberies even basic thefts by focusing on crime apprehension if you decide to go this route I will provide you the crime forecast information in advance and that's very helpful because you can get it weeks months or even a year into it that's gonna help you plan your resources and have an actual idea of how it's gonna happen and where it's gonna happen I will also give you the the route which will show you the travel patterns of the suspect this is very important information because now you know where they're going and how they're gonna get there you will also know how many suspects and the number of crimes they're gonna commit all this is based on uh, advanced mathematical algorithms and computer programs you will know everything at least weeks in advance the problem with crime apprehension is that it does come with certain issues that you have to uh, meet in order for you to be successful. The first thing is you have to meet with different entities. You have to uh, meet with detectives, your crime analysis unit, even outside agencies. You also have to put a tactical plan for your resources. You have to set up observation posts and you have to use officers that have the background and expertise in doing these type of uh, operations. Now this is the common use of predictive policing by most agencies. They, are a, they usually focus on apprehension, uh, stopping people, and other law enforcement productivity. The reason why they're not very successful is because they're intermixing the crime aspect and the prevention aspect. The common scenario goes like this. An officer is assigned an area and in anywhere in the district. So the officer goes out and they make uh, stops. And once they make a, a vehicle stop or a pedestrian stop, it could take them 20 minutes to several hours depending on the outcome of the stop. Once the officer puts themselves out of the problem area, the crime continues. Remember, 70% of your crime comes from outside. Only 30% is within. So if the officer take themselves out of the problem area, they're not players anymore. And so the problem continues. Or eventually, if the officer cannot find or cannot make the necessary stops, they leave the target area and focus on productivity elsewhere. A couple of things that you have to remember when you're implementing a 
predictive policing program. You cannot, you cannot use or intermix crime prevention and crime apprehension. Uh, both of these phases have different strategies, different tactics, and very, very different results. If your goal is to reduce crime, then focus on crime reduction. If your goal is to make arrests, then focus on crime apprehension. If your goal is productivity, then focus on productivity. But you cannot mix the different phases because once you mix them up, you eventually take yourself out of the uh, out of the area. And once you take yourself out of the area, you're not a player anymore. You cannot you cannot prevent or you cannot make a risk. Predictive policing is a very, very powerful tool if utilized correctly. The way I've been using it is very effective. I've used it with uh, large entities, uh, small agencies. I've used it with 100 officers. I've used it with 12 officers. I've used it with two officers. And the way that I would do it in a, in a small area is the same way I would do it in a large area. Focus on the prevention and reduce uh, the crime problem. The way I would do it is I would help train the officers. I will help with the route patrols. I will maintain constant contact with the officers. I will create the work schedules based on those forecasts. I will assure that all locations and the routes are followed. I will track crime issues on the targeted areas. I will attend all crime control meetings and I will post all information related to the operation on either a website that I will create or a special link that I will create. But the most important thing that I will do is I can guarantee a 40% crime reduction on any part one crime uh, within a month. Now, the reason why I would always use two areas is because both areas will simultaneously uh, reduce the crimes. I will use two officers. The officers will alternate on the routes, locations, and the crime problems. And they will have a 24-hour coverage on the most critical days. It's a very effective model. Uh, I've used it for many, many years now. I've used it with different agencies. It is very effective. In order for any agency or entity to attain similar results, they will need to flood these two areas with at least 12 to 15 officers every day for a month. I don't need 12 to 15 days of I mean, officers. All I need is two officers and a little bit of flexibility. Nothing else. Within seven to ten working days, I can have this type of operation up and running. By June of 2016, I'm going to publish my book, Predictive Policing Concepts, Strategies, and Information. The book has over 10 years of extensive information and working field working operations it is very detailed it has uh, many many concepts strategies uh, a lot of good information on how to implement and focus your resources on a predictive uh, policing program I encourage you to browse through my website Look at the type of work that I do so you can get a better idea. If you would like a free copy of this book sometime in June or July, just send me an email and I'll be more than happy to send you a free copy. Thank you for taking the time and as always, take care.